Hey everybody, this is David from Brave It. Today I've got some good news and some pretty bad news. Uh, so about two years ago, I made a video uh, about a controller made by 8BitDo called the SN30. I thought it was a good video at the time. I was very wrong because people started looking it up and they started trying to follow the directions and there were basically none. So the good news is that today I'm going to try to fix that by making this video, which is going to actually show you how to do the things that I described in the first video. So without further ado, let's go to the office. There it is, the controller in all its glory. Don't get too carried away though because we have to put it back down so that we can go to the 8 do website. The exact link you're looking for is support8 I'll make sure to include a link to it in the description. You'll want to scroll down to the bottom of the page under Discontinued Products to find the SN30 Retro Set, which is actually labeled as the SF30 at the time of this recording. Put your mouse on the icon and click the link for firmware update. Since we're hardcore gamers and all, and we're using Windows at the moment, you'll want to click the link for the Windows download. Once the download is complete, you'll want to click on it to open the file explorer. We don't want to open the file quite yet since we'll need to extract it. Go to your downloads folder, right click the file you just downloaded, and click extract all. If you leave the location alone and click extract, it will extract the file straight into your downloads folder. Once it's extracted, open the newly extracted folder, then open the next folder that's inside that one, then run the 8-bit do firmware updater.exe file. Once the firmware updater is up and running, grab your controller and plug it into your computer using a micro USB cable. Once you have it connected, you should get a message from the firmware updater program saying that there's a new version that you can update to. Click update and then prepare to update. Unplug your controller from the computer and hold down the start button to turn off the controller. Once the controller is off, press and hold the left and right shoulder buttons and start until the controller powers on. You should see both of the lights on the controller flashing if it was done right. Plug your controller back in and the update process should just start automatically. Once it's updated, click on update complete and you'll be taken back to the firmware update screen. If you want to double check which version of the firmware you're currently running, then click the firmware update icon in the middle of the screen and then the version with the filled in radio dial next to it is the version that your controller is currently running. So here's the same process for the macOS version of the updater. It's mostly the same with a couple of differences in there. You'll want to go to the support site and click the macOS download link. This is going to download a DMG file which you can then double click to open. I don't know if you have to do this but I like to drag the application into the applications folder before launching it. Once you drag it into the folder you need to open Launchpad, or whatever it's called, and find the firmware updater application. You may need to click another open prompt once you open the tool, but it should look almost the same as it did with Windows. From here, you plug the controller into the Mac, wait for the light to come on, and click on the firmware update button. Make sure the newer version of the firmware is selected with the radio dial, click on update, and then click prepare to update. Unplug the cable from the controller, hold the start button until the lights go out, press and hold the left and right shoulder buttons and hold start until it turns on again. You should see both lights flashing on the controller now and you can plug it back in. Firmware update should just start automatically and finish updating the firmware on the controller. To confirm that you're running the newer firmware version, you can click on Update Complete, then Firmware Update, and then you see which version has the radio dial selected next to it. To add the controller via Bluetooth in Windows 10, go to Start, Settings, and then Devices. Click on Add a Bluetooth or other device and then select Bluetooth in the list of options. It should go to a screen that says Add a Device and it'll wait for you to make your device searchable so that the computer can see it. 
Now you hold down the X button on the controller and press the start button until the controller turns on. The light on the top of the controller should be flashing twice per second to show that it's in X input mode. Press and hold the select button for about 3 seconds and the light should start flashing. In another moment or two, your 8-bit do controller should appear in the list of Bluetooth devices that we can connect to. Click on it, and the light on the controller should turn solid after a moment, indicating that it's connected to the computer. Alright, now that your controller is good to go, we can fire up a game. Well, no, nah, just kidding. Uh, we're going to go over the Bluetooth on macOS. So, once your Mac is on, go to the Apple logo in the upper left corner, click on System Preferences, then click on Bluetooth. Once the Bluetooth window is on the screen, your Mac will start searching for devices to connect to. This is where you press and hold A and start on the controller until it turns on. The light on the controller should be flashing about three times per second, indicating that it's in Mac mode. It will show up in the Bluetooth menu with its Mac address <laughs> for the name. Click connect, leave the zeros for the pin, and click connect again. The light on the controller should turn solid, indicating that it's now connected to the Mac. Why does it show up as a PlayStation 4 controller? Well, I don't know. I didn't really dig into it that far, but it does work, and that's kind of all that matters. You can also connect the controller through X input mode to your Mac as well, which may or may not be a better choice for some games. Press and hold X and start for about 3 seconds to have your controller turn on in X input mode. The light should be flashing about twice every second. Press and hold select on the controller until the light is rapidly flashing. Your controller should appear in the list of Bluetooth devices after a moment or two with the Bluetooth window open. Click connect when the controller shows up and the light on the controller should turn solid indicating it's now connected to the Mac. Now, let's run over how to connect this thing to the Nintendo Switch. First, kick on your Switch and go to controllers from the home menu. Select change grip slash order, and you should be at a screen waiting for your controller to appear. Press and hold Y and start until the controller powers on. The light on the controller will flash a few times and should automatically connect to the switch. At this point, I'd highly recommend just restarting the switch. Not just putting it to sleep and turning it back on again, but completely shutting it down and then powering it back on. One thing I ran into with this controller and the switch is that this controller would not automatically connect to the switch or connect to the switch at all after I put the switch to sleep. After I did some googling, I stumbled on a video which revealed that restarting the switch completely after you've connected the controller will allow it to connect to the switch again. I'm not entirely sure why that's the case, but I thought I would mention it here in case you run into the same issue. If you ever thought to yourself, boy, I'd love to connect this controller to an iPhone, well I've got you covered here. Go to Settings, Accessibility, Switch Control, Switches, and Bluetooth devices. Press and hold A and start on your controller until it turns on. Keep an eye on your phone and wait for the controller to show up in the list of devices. Tap on the controller when it appears and your controller should connect after another moment. The light on your controller should then turn solid indicating it's now connected to your phone. Well, everybody, that was me fumbling with any bit do SM30 controller yet again, but hopefully this time it actually helped. This is David from Braven. See you guys later.